Hey guys, I'm Daniel, and today we're shooting another video on the, in the pursuit of more horsepower. So, the car is tuned, and it's tuned very well on 93 octanes. I'm super happy with the way it rides, but I have a flex fuel car. We can run ethanol, and we can get even more power. So, in order to run ethanol, uh, we need to put in more fuel. The problem is, on 93 octanes, we're already pretty much maxing out the injectors. Uh, so there's no more room for ethanol to grow. Every time we try to do something, the duty cycle of the injectors shoots up to 100% and that's not where you want to be. So the only solution is to get bigger injectors. So I believe we're running 36 pound injectors and I was looking for something in a 45 pound area. However, I couldn't find anything. The only injectors I could find that will fit our vehicle are 50 pound injectors from an LS7 engine out of the Corvette. So we're gonna pop that in and then we'll have Mario from Demigod Tuning retune it. You cannot run uh, upgraded injectors with a stock tune. It's just not gonna happen. It's just gonna flood your engine because uh, there, there's no calibration for the computer to know how much fuel is actually going in because your computer doesn't know the new injector size. So keep that in mind when you upgrade to injectors uh, that you need your tuner to uh, adjust for that. So that being said, let's get to it. All right, so here we go. Uh, if you haven't seen my lower intake manifold uh, video, I uh, will link it in the description. Go and take a look at it. This will show you the complete disassembly of the upper intake and where the fuel rail is. Now you don't have to do the lower intake at this point, but last time we had a disaster with all the fuel leaking all over the place and then everything stank like uh, gasoline uh, uh, for, for a whole day. To prevent that this time, what we're going to do is relieve the fuel pressure. The easiest way to do this is start the car and pull the uh, fuel pump fuse. This way the pump won't shoot any gas anymore up there and it, uh, the car will just die. At that point, there shouldn't be any pressure in the system. Now, is there gonna be a fuel leakage? Maybe a little bit, but at least the pressure is gone and all the gas won't come out. So let's go and take a look. In here, you'll have a diagram. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read, and at my age, I'm a little bit blind, but maybe you can see it right here. So the fuse that we're after is right here, this little 20 amp fuse. So we're going to pull this one. All right, here we go. Uh, I thought the second time around it's gonna be a lot easier, but it wasn't. And even after we did the uh, fuel pump cutoff, it still had pressure in the system, but just on one cylinder. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I hope it's not gonna give me issues later on, but let's get back to the topic. This is the original um, uh, injector, and this is the aftermarket one. Now this one will fit and is made for an LS7 Corvette, but it doesn't really matter. The size is the same. The only thing different is the tabs and the tabs uh, where the fuel rail sits on has a space for the tabs, I guess, to lock in. Still, that should not be a problem because there's a little uh, table, I guess, in the back and that should push it in just as well. So let's apply some assembly loop so we don't pinch the uh, O-rings and let's get it back together.
right now, before we do anything else, we gotta load the new tune that my tuner sent me, and then we should be ready to fire the car up. Let's do it. All right, so after a quick change, uh, so I don't get my nice seats all filthy, uh, we uploaded the new uh, program onto the motor side of things and now for the very first start we have to log it so we're gonna pull up the VCM scanner and we're gonna log uh, the vehicle and send the file back to the tuner so he can see if his adjustments were correct if he should go in this di same direction or if he has to retract or do his magic to put uh, some a little bit on that on there so let's get it started and let's hope it's gonna run fine Let's hit record. And here we go. All right, here we go. The injectors are in and the first tune is loaded. Now I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit with my tuner. We're gonna have to do some test runs just as like when we did the first tune because all that stuff needs to be adjusted and scaled for the larger injectors. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and button this up, take a few test drives, and then we're gonna have to hit the track. Let's see how that goes. Well, that didn't go at all. Um, this video was shot in 2020, early 2020, and uh, it took a few weeks to get the tuning right because nobody before that actually had 50 pound injectors on that engine. So Mari had to figure out from scratch uh, how to fuel it properly. As soon as we got that done, the pandemic hit and the whole country shut down. So nobody was going to the track at that point. So I did a few pulls on the street and it was very comparable to what I got on a track. I was running 14.1, 14.2, very consistent on a non-sticky track, but it wasn't to increase the horsepower at that point. Remember, we're just swapping fuel injectors. The tune was already done for 93. That's it. We kind of pretty much hit the limit. The idea was to make a tune on ethanol, which the old injectors couldn't handle. I mean, even on 93 octanes, we were hitting 90, 95% fuel injector duty, which is too much. So with these new injectors, I'm hitting maybe 60%. So there's more than enough space to grow uh, to make the car faster in the future. That being said, Mario now knows how to tune 50 pound injectors and I think he's already done a few. So if you have an ethanol capable car or a car that you want to tune on ethanol, large injectors are the way to go. So until we shoot a new episode for the ethanol tuning, which is going to happen sometimes in the future, I'll see you around. Take care.